Also on the ballot tonight, this time is Nevada's first district, Democratic Congresswoman Dina Titus, who joins us now. Thank you so much for joining us, Congresswoman Titus. One of the biggest concerns for people living in your state and for millions of Americans across the country right now, of course, rising prices. Nevada is a tourist-driven state, and for some vacations, they're just too expensive right now. How can our economy get back on the right track? Well, my district includes the airport, the Las Vegas Strip, and all downtown. We had the highest unemployment in the country, about 35% during the pandemic, but now we're the fastest recovering state. Uh, people have been pent up, closed up for so long, they want to go out and have a good time. So where better to do that than Las Vegas? We need to tell our story about what the Democrats did to help bring us back. And I think that will make a difference. Nevada is a high stakes state this election cycle, which can be in part attributed to Democrats moves into redistricting. And you've spoken about how the state legislature made those decisions. How do you think that redistricting is impacting voting in your state? Well, the legislature kind of took a roll of the dice, which is appropriate, I guess, in Nevada and spread Democrats across three districts. In a good year, you win all three. In a bad year, it's a lot tougher. But we've got enthusiastic Democrats. Uh, they're turning out today. They know I've been a fighter for them from the very beginning and always will be. So that's the message. And the, the uh, district lines don't really make much of a difference because it's all right here in the metropolitan area. People don't know which district they live in or where the county line is. They just know they're part of uh, the scene. Well, we're looking at a lot of video of Vegas, of course. Uh, if you were a betting woman, uh, what would you say the, the long shot is of, of you getting all three? I'm optimistic or I wouldn't be in this business. We know we're going to have to fight hard, but we're willing to do that. We've done it in the past. We've got to turn out voters. We've got to turn out our Hispanic voters. We've got to convince nonpartisans that uh, we're on the right side of history. I think watching these hearings this week are reminding people of just how bad it was under Donald Trump. And so when they hear that and they can relate it to their lives, like the infrastructure bill, what bridge did we build in your community? What road did we fix in your neighborhood? Did you get internet for your children? All of those things uh, relate and uh, are important to people. They call them kitchen table issues. And we keep hearing the applause there, so we can only imagine that's good news for you. After the insurrection on January 6th, you voted, of course, to impeach President Trump, calling the mob who rushed the Capitol domestic terrorists. Uh, what do you think of the evidence uncovered during the hearing so far? I think they've done an excellent job. It's been very orchestrated. They have supported their positions with video. And especially strong has been the testimony of Trump's own team, his own attorney general, his own lawyer, his own family. So I think that uh, makes a difference. And it shows that he knew what he was doing. He had been advised that it wasn't true. And he continued to try to steal the election. And that's just what they did. Try you've called do. gun... You've called gun violence a national emergency. Do you think that the tentative deal reached in the Senate goes far enough to, to really slow the violence that's been taking place in our country? Well, I don't, but if you get anything out of the Senate, it's a miracle, so it's a good first step. My one disappointment is that it doesn't include a ban on bump stocks. That's what the killer used here in my district when he shot those 58 people, shot and killed 58, wounded a lot more uh, at the fall uh, music festival. So I'd like to see bump stocks included. And when we passed it out of the House, that's the provision that had the most Republican support. So it, it baffles me. Congresswoman Titus, we thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We'll go out there and bring this home. All right. That applause sounds like a good indicator that, that you're getting there, at least. Thank you again. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.